Hi, my name is Mitch, and I play guitar in a band called Silent Planet. And today I'm going to be uh, showing you a little bit of uh, the gear that we use to uh, do what we do. So um, this is my pedal board. It's pretty quaint. Um, it's also kind of in disarray. There's a bunch of very uh, unesthetically pleasing Velcro hanging off in all directions and all that. Um, but basically, uh, um, there's two things that I run in front of the head. Uh, one of those is the ISP decimator uh, noise gate um, and the SP compressor. Um, this guy's pretty much on all the time, uh, right around this setting here. And the compressor I mainly use for clean parts and tapping segments. Um, a lot of times when you're playing live and you're, you're doing sort of intricate tapping things or things where you're not picking full velocity, um, this guy really helps to bring all of those notes out. And in the clean sections as well, helps to make everything audible. Um, the way I have it set right now is not completely squashed, um, so it's not mega prog sounding. Uh, it, you know, it's kind of about the closest you can get to getting everything to a good dynamic level without being over the top squashed. Um, and then for the effects loop, uh, I have this Dunlop volume pedal. Um, I've used other volume pedals in the past that have like a string sort of setup, and I've broken more than I can count. Um, so I got this guy about a year ago, and it's a freaking tank. Um, and I step on it, I use it. A lot. Um, I use the volume pedal more than most people. Um, a lot of people use their tuner as a mute or something in between songs. I'm all on here. Uh, all the swelly stuff. Um, I like to hit a bunch of weird harmonics and like swell in and make some weird kind of noises. Um, but yeah, from there, um, I have this uh, this polytune right here that is uh, wired into the tuner out up here. So this is constantly on. So this is really cool because uh, while I'm playing, if I'm doing a bend or something and it's hard to kind of hear the note, I can actually see if it's in tune or not and kind of bend accordingly. Um, and also, yeah, just in conjunction with this, this is essentially my tuner mute. This is always on, so I tune with this down. Um, as far as the actual effects loop, um, tuner uh, not included. It comes from the input right here is the send, and the send comes down here to this transition delay pedal, which is uh, pretty rare. It was um, a TC Electronic Guitar Center collaboration pedal. Um, so basically this is a flashback, but with a different case. Um, instead of being the cool blue color, it's this cool kind of soft green sort of thing. And uh, it's essentially the same thing. The only difference is the color, the name, and uh, some of the, the names of these different types of delays are different on the, the um, flashback. For instance, like Morph on here is just mod on the flashback, but it's the same exact thing. Um, from there, uh, I have a Strymon Blue Sky, which as you can see is missing a uh, switch. It's uh, really kind of the main of my existence right now. I need to fix that. But um, this is a great pedal, um, and it's actually my secondary reverb. This Hall of Fame right here that I got recently, um, I was using a Hardwire RV7 for a while, and that one day decided just to stop working. So I went to the Guitar Center, and I was like, well, I need to get something. So I plugged this thing in, and uh, I was pretty pretty impressed with it, and uh, I basically leave it at this exact setting the entire set. Um, I will switch between mod and church settings. Um, I kind of like to use the mod one because I feel like we don't use a whole lot of modulation on our recordings, and it's kind of cool to do something a little bit different live. Um, it really kind of makes some of the parts stand out a bit because there's like a little bit of wobble to them. Um, but yeah, that's uh, my pedal board. This is the end of the effects loop. Goes back into the head. Um, yeah, so this is our, uh, our refrigerator. Um, this pretty much houses everything that is 100% essential to our band. Um, this is my head, the uh, EVH5153, 50 watt version. Um, it's probably, in my opinion, the best head that I've ever played uh, for this style of music, and I'm very, very happy with it. Um, uh, yeah, this whole entire thing houses uh, our, our in-ear monitoring unit. Um, we have an X32 rack right here, which is used uh, to send our tracks to front of house, all of the weird, crazy noises that are not guitars. Um, and from here, uh, we run our laptop into this. We're running a program called Reaper for all of our tracks and such. Um, and we also have a reamp guitar signal coming out of Reaper. 
Um, in the past, I used to use an actual, another head, and another 5150. And uh, somebody broke into our van and stole it one day. So being kind of short on cash and resources, we decided to basically take the DI guitar signal that was in Reaper, put the guitar rig plugin on it, uh, print those files, and those come out of the laptop, out of the X32, into a reamp box, through the power amp, which is this guy down here, uh, and then through a very long speaker cable to the other side of stage. And so that's how it sounds like there's two of me playing, even though there's only one. So, this is my main guitar. Um, it is a Legator Ninja Baritone. Um, swapped the uh, stock pickup out in the bridge for a Seymour Duncan JB, which is the best pickup in the known universe. Um, yeah, I, I have the JB in literally every guitar that I play on stage uh, ever. Um, Legator is a relatively small company still, they're based out of Los Angeles and they were super, super nice to us um, and willing to kind of give us a chance and nobody else would uh, with instruments and um, it's basically like the most solid guitar I've ever owned. This thing, you can see, there's even a bent tuning peg and it's still holding on for dear life. Like this thing gets thrashed on a daily basis. Uh, I throw it and spin it and do all sorts of bad things to it. And it still manages to go through a whole tour um, staying intact in one piece. Um, even with the weather changes and everything, the intonation hasn't even needed to be changed like at all, which is pretty crazy. I'm very used to going on winter tours and having the guitar being completely wonky after like, you know, two days. Um, and we've been on tour for about a month and a half now. This thing just went to Puerto Rico with me back Humidity or not, cold or not, it's still 100% all the time. Um, and I'm very happy with it. Um, the coolest thing about this is actually these little inlays. It kind of reminds me of octopus suction cups. And that's that's my favorite thing about the guitar. We work with uh, Diodario, and on this guitar I have the standard baritone set. It's a teal package, and the gauges on those are 62 to 13. Um, and generally, um, uh, on a standard steel guitar, being in drop A sharp, which is the tuning we play in, that is kind of floppy. But because of the extended scale of this guitar, it kind of ends up being perfect. It's not too thick, it's not too wobbly, it's nice in the middle. I also have really tiny hands, so um, it just kind of works out really well for me to be able to not have to be pushing down ginormous uh, strings. It keeps my hands from hurting too bad, playing all this ridiculous stuff all the time. Cool. Uh, once again, uh, I'm Mitch from Silent Planet. Thank you very much for checking out our gear. Um, catch us on our headliner in February, March, and pick up our new record, Everything Was Sound. Thank you.